Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tract and Truth Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. My Bible is sitting open, but today it's open to 2 Timothy and chapter 2. And if you can, reach over, get your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, on the other four days of our broadcast week, we study the Word of God, and in recent days, we're in the book of Titus, but our Tuesday broadcast is different. We take and we call it our Tract and Truth Tuesday, and we emphasize the fact that we want people to use gospel tracts, but we want God's people to become more effective at telling the gospel, sharing the gospel with people who do not know Christ as Savior, and that's the day you're listening to our Tract and Truth Tuesday. So I've got a gospel tract here in my hand, but today is really a rather special day for the broadcast, well, actually for two reasons. One's a rather minor reason, and that is that it's my birthday, and I have to say those immortal words, where have all those years gone? My friend, I've had a great life. I love my life. Oh, there have been problems and trials. That's true for everybody. But my heavenly Father and my earthly Father have stood by me all along the way. My earthly Father, he's in heaven now, but he was the greatest dad in all the world. And you'll not bother if I say this. I think my dad was better than your dad. Well, that's my opinion. I hope you had a great dad. My dad was a tremendous gift from God. But the second reason why this is a special day is that I get to give to you a report on our ministry week in the country of Cuba. I landed in Cuba on February the 2nd, and I got home on February the 11th. What a great time of seeing God at work in the preaching and the ministry of the Word of God. And today, I want to report on the power of God to save souls and also on the godly pastors and missionaries that are serving there in Cuba. And today, my friend, is a great day for you to be listening. Before I get done, I want you to rejoice with me over the 167 souls that received Christ as Savior during our time in Cuba. That's where we're headed. Get your Bible open to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. But right now, I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Now, friend, a gospel tract, and by the way, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The main thrust of the ministry here at Bible Tracks Incorporated is to publish gospel tracts. We do them in different languages. And for 80 years, we've been giving them away all over the world. Our ministry theme is this, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. The one track in my hand right now is entitled Coupon Faith with a question mark. Coupon Faith? It is amazing to me how much faith people will put into a coupon. This track was written after my wife and I were in a store, grocery store, and the lady in front of us got over $70 worth of groceries, but she spent less than 20, all because she had these coupons. And we got in a conversation. The conversation uh, got a little silly because I pretended like I didn't know what a coupon was. And I think the lady quickly understood that I was uh, having some fun there. But friend, people believe coupons. They believe exactly what they say, and they're going to hand them in and redeem them for what those coupons state. It's amazing how people will believe a coupon, but they won't believe the word of God. 
friend, here's a great gospel track, Coupon Faith. It starts with a presentation that people put their faith in coupons. We need to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a great track for ladies. A friend, at the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on with three different ways by which you can contact us. If you'll give us your name and your mailing address, I'll send you a free sample packet containing over 40 different gospel tracks. This one, Coupon Faith, will be in there. You're going to find great tools to share the gospel. If you can't wait to the end of the broadcast, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open there to 2 Timothy chapter 2, look at verse 8. It says this, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer as an evildoer even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Jesus Christ with eternal glory. Stop, please, right there. The phrase out of those uh, verses I want to latch on to is there in verse 9, which says that the word of God is not bound. Now, before I get any farther here, let me just openly and honestly thank all of you who were praying for our ministry trip to Cuba. I have received notes and emails and phone calls from folk who stood by us in prayer, and your prayers were powerful, more powerful than you can know, and here is why. We arrived in the town of San Fuegos, Cuba on the 2nd of February and got our team together. I was one of five American preachers that went there. On the 3rd, February 3rd, that Saturday, we received word that our lead translator, his sister in her mid-30s, had passed away. Very unexpected. Our translator was devastated, and obviously he had to go back home to be with his family. Well, our team looked at each other and immediately knew that the enemy of our soul was trying to hamper and hurt this week of ministry. Well, we prayed. That's where God's people go, amen? We prayed and God responded. The secondary translator stepped up and did a tremendous job. Plus, I got to work with a Cuban pastor who, before becoming a pastor, taught English, but he had never translated before. And so, well, and he had not really done much work in English in a few years, but we prayed and God answered. And his translation work was tremendous and souls were saved. During the daytime hours, there was a pastors and Christian workers conference going on. We had over 200 pastors and pastors' wives and missionaries and lay workers there. And these people soaked in the word of God. But even more, those dear Cuban believers strengthened us. They encouraged us. They're great servants of God, faithful to the, and to the truth of the word of God. For my sessions during the conference, I taught Psalm 25. And now, Psalm 25 tells us how God teaches. And I told those attending that if we will learn how God teaches and follow his role model, we're going to be doing God's work God's way. Oh, and by the way, you should hear the Cuban believers sing. They hold nothing back and they sing with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. They sing to the God that saves them and the God that they served. I loved being there in the services. Well, that's what we did during the day. But each evening, Saturday through Thursday, the five preachers went out to local churches and preached the gospel. Many of these churches were two hours to four and a half hours away over some really rotten roads, to tell you the truth. In some places, there had been no American there in over 70 years. So many of the people had never seen an American. They came to hear an American preach at the church. My original plans for the evening time was to preach some gospel sermons from the Gospel of Mark, but when I saw the visitors that were there and their lack of just just very basic Bible knowledge, I changed my plans. I taught what I call the big story of the Bible. 
I used my Bible as a visual aid, and I showed how creation, the story of creation, takes just two pages of the Bible. Then I showed them the section that talks about the ruin of our world due to man's sinfulness and how that, too, takes just two pages of the Bible. Then I jumped to the end of the Bible, and I showed them Revelation 21 and 22, and, and I'm reading verses out of all of these during this time of preaching. And in, But Revelation 21 and 22, that's where God restores the broken world. He removes sickness, he removes pain, he removes death. But the restoration segment of the Bible takes up, guess what, two pages. Then I held my Bible up in this manner. Between my thumb and index finger, I showed them the section of the Bible starting at Genesis 5 going through Revelation 20. I had that between my fingers. That I called the rescue part of the big Bible story. It's the rescue part. I told the people that the big overarching story that ties all the smaller stories together, but there's just one point here. I looked at those present and I said, if you are not part of the rescue story, you can't be part of the restoration. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Everybody wants to be with God for eternity, but you can't be in restoration unless you've been part of the rescue story. And the rescue, as you well know, centers on the person of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. Well, the Old Testament part of the rescue foretold his coming and gives us facts about his coming and gives us pictures about what he will do when he comes. The New Testament part of the rescue reveals Christ, and we see his work, his work in his earthly ministry, doing the things that the Christ would do, but then leading up to Calvary. And there he went and died on the cross, shed his blood to rescue broken, sinful people. You see, to be part of the restoration in eternity where God will make all things new. That's what Revelation 21.5 says. Before you can be part of the restoration where God makes all things new, God must make you and I new. He starts with the heart cleansing us from our sin. Well, in all, we preach to just about 1,700 people, some of them very small uh, groups of people, some of them larger but as the gospels preach and salvation was offered by me and the other four preachers, 167 people, they're the ones that publicly testified to receiving Christ. Now, as the gospel was presented, we asked people to raise their hand if they wanted to pray to receive Christ, and we showed them how to do that. Many more than the 167, many more hands were raised to say that they had prayed to receive Christ. That number, I don't know. The total number that received Christ will not be known until we get to glory. But I do know this, 167 is an accurate and conservative number of those that came to know Christ as Savior. My friend, if you prayed for us, thank you. You share in these results. Bless you. But dear friend, the gospel doesn't just work in Cuba or some other country. It works where you live as well. The gospel will work where it's tried. Let me ask you, have you been rescued from your sin? Unless you're part of the Bible's rescue story centered in Jesus Christ, you cannot be part of the restoration where God makes all things new forever and forever. Friend, receive Christ as your Savior today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.